Liz. Do you want something, sir? Yes, I want Liz. Have you seen her? Uh, no, sir. Well, it's 10.15. She's doing it at 9. It's rather strange. Mm -hmm. well, I'm afraid I've only just come in myself, mm. sir. Telephone her flat, will you? It's uh, 160 Yes, sir. No answer, sir. Right. Get me a secretary from the duty room. Yes, sir. We'll give her to 11, then we're on red alert. But, sir, she might have just had an accident or something. Just an accident? How can Oh, you know what I mean, sir. There could be a hundred reasons why yeah. she's late. Liz has never been late here in her life. She's never missed a day. She's an example to you all. Yes, sir, but all the same. I know you think I'm fussing, but I'd sooner be foolish than careless. We'll give her to 11, then we're on red alert. Yeah? Charlie wants to talk to you. Come again? Charlie wants to talk to you. Never heard of him. I'm just wondering if I know you. All right, it's your rest day. This is an emergency. Report in at once. Oh, where's Liz? Just a moment. Who are you? What do you want? Callan, uh, Hunter sent for me. Well, you'll have to identify yourself. I've never seen you before in my life. <laughs> That's mutual love. C4. Yes, well, it appears to be in order. I have to go straight in. Thank you, love. Where's Liz? I have no idea. And stop calling me love. Oh, I will try. I really will. Be very difficult, darling. Huh. You were very cautious on the telephone. Some strange bird phones me up and says Charlie wants me. Yes, I was cautious. Liz has disappeared. What? Police hospitals haven't heard of her. You're on red alert. What, all of us? All of you. That girl's a walking memory bank. She's been in a red file since the day she took the job. Yeah, we've got a lot in common. Quite a bit, yes, except she's prettier. And she knows even more than you do. I want her back. She's a red file, sir. Oh, don't worry, James. You'll make it one day, lad. You mean there's a chance she's defected? About 50,000 to one. There's a very good chance she's been lifted. I put our people onto the likely clients. KGB, East Germans, French. CIA? Them too. I want you to search her flat. Right. Cross can help you. I can do her flat on my own, sir, unless you want Cross to watch me. That's not necessary. At this stage. Did you have something else in mind for Cross? When was Liz last seen? Last night she signed out at 6.30. Luke no, saw I did. Oh. Well, James could follow her journey home. Which way she usually go? Bus and tube. Right, he could go on the bus and tube. We could find out. Yes, see that, Cross. The address is on the label. Thank you, sir. Now, before you go, when did you last see Liz Callum? Yesterday morning, sir. She typed out some notes for me. You, Cross? Uh, Monday, I think, sir. I've been on the Greek embassy job for the last two days. I like Liz. It would be best if you brought her back unhurt. You're saying we can kill her? If we have to, yeah. Could you really do that? How the hell should I know? It doesn't happen, does it?
Helen, the armourer would like a word with you. Right, thank you, love. He said it was urgent. Well, it's all urgent today, love, isn't it? Don't keep calling, calling you love. I know, I'm sorry, but what else can I call you, love? Well? There's nothing. You sure? I'm sure. There's got to be something. Look, so I'll tell you just what there is, right? She's got a lot of clothes. She's got perfume, makeup. There's furniture there. She's got telly, radio, record player, telephone. There's some food. There's not very much. There's coffee, tea. There's a bottle of gin, which is half empty. There's three tonics. There's no letters. There's no memos. There's no diaries. Nothing. And she's a sad one, that. Sad? Yeah, well, it's pretty sad if you're that lonely. And that was really all? Yeah, well, books. She's got millions of books. Now, look, if you're looking for a code or a micro dot, I'll need help. No. Not yet. It's crossback, yeah? No. There's something you want. Yeah, there's something I want, yeah. Something I won't like. No, you, you won't like it, Senna. I've got to see a file. You know I can't do I'm that. sorry, you've got to let me see it. Indeed? Look, sir, I told you there was a lot of books. Mm, go on. Now, some of them are in German, and Polish, and some in Russian. Well, I've got to know why, otherwise I won't know where to start looking. She's Polish. Ah. At least she was. She was born in a village called Gratzisk. The Germans wiped it out in 1944 when she was three years old. And all of it? All of it. Every man, woman and child. Except Liz. It was the resistance centre. Well, why didn't they kill her? Her father hid her behind a bookcase just before the SS shot him. And her mother and her three brothers. She stayed hidden for two days, then some looters found her. Why they didn't kill her, I don't know. Well, how much do you think that she remembers of all this? Oh, well, you know. More than you know. She had papers, um, birth certificates, so on, sewn into her clothes. Well, what happened to her? Like a million kids all over Europe. One refugee camp after another. Nine years of it. Then an English couple called March adopted her, had her educated. She worshipped them, of course. Yeah. Well, they were killed in a road accident five years ago, some fit and run drunk. Yes. She is a sad one, all right. How do we get her, sir? March was a cipher clerk in the foreign office. He'd done Polish underground liaison during the war, so naturally we kept an eye on him. When he died, personnel had a look at Liz. She was just what we wanted. Fluent Polish, Russian, German. No relations. No one she loved. No one who could be used against her. Against us. Boyfriend? Nobody permanent. The section is all she has, David. Her mother, father, her home. And God help her. Somebody has to. And soon. Hi, Mr. Cowell. Uh, Mr. Judge, you wanted to see me? Yeah, it's a uh, kind of a personal matter. Urgent, you said? Uh, yeah. Do you want to try your luck? Free ammunition? Oh, come on, Mr. Judge. Will you come on? There's a flap on. Yeah, I know, uh, Liz. Well, make up your mind. You're going to tell me or not? She wanted me to teach her how to shoot. Oh, yeah. Naturally, you did refuse, Mr. Judge. Three bulls. I said yes, I taught her. She shaped up pretty good. Look at that. I've seen them before, Mr. Callan. I've seen them all before. I know you have. And you know this one goes off, right? When they tell me to make this go off, it goes off. You want to know, mate? You train me. You train me, they pay me. Right, how long she been coming here? Ten days. When? And her lunch break. She had talent, Mr. Cowley. Yeah, I'm sure she has. What kind of gun she use? A uh, little one, a uh, 32. Looked like I say it was a personal thing. Not but... down here, Mr. Judd. Nothing's personal, mate. Not down here. Charlie, please. James Cross. I was to cross. I have a message for you from Mr. Cullen. We're to meet him in his flat in the Okay. I'm putting you through now. Yes? Uh, cross, sir. Uh, nothing, sir. Nobody's seen her at all. 
Very well, it was a long shot anyway. Uh, go and work with Callan, he may have something. Yes, sir. I uh, take it Callan leads, sir. This is no time to worry about your image. Of course, Callan leads. Now get on with it. Good afternoon. Afternoon, you, Frank. I have a message for you. It's nice. It's very nice. This fine example of British craftsmanship can be yours if you answer a few questions. What are you after, friend? There's a bird lives here. And a friend, it's more than my job's worth. Yeah, hang on, hang on. You see, I'm a detective. Offering five as private detective. So naturally, if I want information, I've got to pay for it, right? Ah, oh, I thought you wanted a bird, you know. Oh, no, no. I mean, I can find my own, can't I? I wish I could. What's the trouble, friend? It's divorce. Grounds for adultery? Yeah. Smash. Come this way, we're talking private. Welcome to the Harry. We can talk here. Peaceable. Which bird are you after, friend? Number 9A. Name, Elizabeth March. High f height about 5 foot 4, age 28. She's blonde, got blue eyes. You don't have to tell me, friend. I can see her already. I was hoping it was going to be her. Little darling, she is. <laughs> Regular little darling. Go, you see him up there in the sun. Yeah, you're all right. Simmer down, simmer down, friend. You'll burst something. What's your name? Dustin. Arnold Dustin. You can call me Arnie like all the others. Oh, thank you, Arnie. Right, Arnie, question number one for ten bob. Any boyfriends? No, not what we could call regular, but there's been one or two, off and on. Oh, yeah? Recently? Nah. What would you mean by that? Oh, I don't know, last ten to fifteen days? Take your time, Arnie. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this question's for a quid. Well, I wouldn't like to swear to any cop. You won't get a chance, mate. There's been one at that time. Right? Oh, you're doing beautifully, honey. Do you know that? Beautifully. Right now. Third and last question. Name. Just say it, Arnie. That's all you've got to do. Say it. This beautiful piece of paper's yours. How would I know his name? By listening. Well, uh, I did happen to eat parts of the door the night before last. Oh, yeah. Taking a bath, was she? You're a bit naughty yourself, if you ask me, friend. Oh, you've no idea, friend. No idea. Huh? <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the phone rings. It actually comes. I'll tell you, I've seen oh, some in my... I can imagine it. I can imagine it. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you can. <laughs> uh, how'd it go? Uh, oh, yes, uh, Mr. Cross. Yes, put him on. Uh, just like that, and, uh, Hello, James. Is that you? Where are you calling from? Your club? Very well, and she made a date with him for last night. I mean, standing there, just yeah, as she... Yeah, yeah, His name was Cross. Well, that's what she said, friend. James Cross. Uh, hey! Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Arnie. See, I've been mixing with some pretty nasty people lately. Rubs off, doesn't it? was as big a blank as a tube. What else could it be? They carry thousands of people every day. Who's gonna recognize one girl? Don't you have to fiddle with those things? Helps me think. Aha, uh -huh, that's what you're doing, is it thinking? That's what I'm doing, thinking. I'm thinking you're a bloody liar, James. What did you say? I said I think you're a bloody liar! The chances you take, Mr. Callan, you should have been dead ten years ago. No, no, I'm not taking chances, son. You see, you were careless. What are you talking about? I'm talking about? about you and Liz. You didn't bother to follow her own, did you? Look, I've just told you I've been looking for all day. That's what I mean. You're a bloody liar. You see, you had a date with Liz last night. 
And you picked her up on the way home from work. That's why you didn't bother to look for her. You're crazy. You know, that's against standing orders. That's against standing orders, mate. I'm very surprised you know it. Now, I'll tell you something, James. I went round to the flats, you see. I saw the porter. Very randy man, nasty man, nosy man. He heard your name. So please, don't waste my time. All right, what are you going to do about it? Report me to Hunter? But, I mean, how stupid can you get? There's a red alert on, James, and do you know what that means? Do you really know what it means? It means, mate, that any day now, Hunter is going to do intensive interior checks on you and on me. And, mate, you're going to finish up under a 500-watt bulb explaining to the goon squad why you started telling Hunter lies. Yeah, all right. Look, I'm sorry. Uh... She, uh... Oh, we liked each other. We... we went out a few times, we covered up because we didn't want Hunter to know. We liked our jobs too much. How about last night? She came around to my place. We cooked a meal and... Yeah. Well, how was she? I mean, was she worried? Well, it's was not she... easy to tell. What did you force yourself? Or I reckon she was worried out of her skull and she didn't show it. But did you talk about work? No, no, we had a rule about that. All right, all right. What did she talk about? Well, nothing in particular. It... Did talk about her childhood a bit, but she was. She talked about her childhood. That's it. I mean, that's got to be it. Well, we could be here for a year at this rate. Right, let's let's change. Let's just start looking. Ten to fifteen days ago, right? Why ten days ago? Well, just do it, James, will you? Look for Poland. Anything Polish. Yeah, there's a stopper here from Ankle Kleist, wanted for war crimes, Polish military intelligence. So look. Oh, Santa's writing, what is it? No action at this time. It's Lizzie's. Look, look, there. Something, something S? Question mark. Please. Well, this might be enough to go on. Let's get on. Please. Yes, Mr. Kell. Liz March. She taken anything up lately? She brought written requests from Mr. Hunter every day. No, no, this wouldn't be from Hunter. Well, I hardly think she'd take anything out on her own. And, of course, it would take me a considerable time to check. No, it wouldn't take you very long. You see, she's on red alert. Uh, look, 10 to 15 days ago, will you please, and then work forward. Good heavens. Yes, she has done. Now, why on earth should she want that one? Which one? Sobolski. S. S. and a query. Should you check it back in again? Yes, the same day. Right, get it, James. Huh? Keep looking, please. That appears to be the only one. Yeah. Sobolski. Who's here? Naturalized citizen of Switzerland, a professional psychiatrist, now attending conference in London. The furthest out of his immigration car. Hey. The polls say his real name is Gunter Kleist. Gunter Kleist. Gunter Kleist, ex medical officer, SS Death's Head Division, urgently wanted for questions in connection with mass murders in Poland. Yeah, I like there's something else in Liz's writing. Gradzisk. How the hell would she know that he was in Gradzisk? Look, list of war crimes, Gradzisk. Circumstantial evidence only, but this leads strongly to the conclusion that a unit of the SS Death's Head Division, well, that's uh, Kleistor yeah, Sobotska's yeah. unit, was responsible for the killing of 487 men, women, and children. And that's it. What's that? Oh, I can help you there. That's a memo on suspected war criminals. Every file on has one. Go on. They're time consuming cases and usually fruitless. The Eastern Bloc fusses, of course, and so does Israel. But we only move against ex-Nazis if they threaten our security. Marvellous, isn't it? 487 people murdered and we take no action. Yeah, maybe one of us has. She took one. What'd she take? A Smith & Wesson 32 with a two-inch barrel. Oh, God. Small enough to go into a handbag, but you'd have to get up awful close to do any good. And Lizzie's the type who gets up close. Or didn't you notice, Mr. Judd?
There was some kind of a note from the Poles about Sabovsky. It wasn't anything we could act on. Oh, why not, sir? Well, you've seen the memo, surely. Sabovsky's no threat to our security, whether he's Kleist or not. And all we got from the Poles were accusations, no proof. Even if we had acted on it, we'd have looked to set a damn fools, which is probably what the Poles wanted anyway. So did you have any idea that Kleist might be connected with Gradzisk? Liz thought he was, sir. So no time for guesses, Cross, however inspired. Blimey, I can show you. Is my car ready? Yes, sir, it's standing by. Very well. Sabovsky is not your concern, Callum. You find Liz, hmm? Do it quickly. Our masters are getting jumpy. Well, he didn't even look at the file. Of he didn't look at the file. He doesn't have to look at the bloody file, does he? He's written in it. You know, in his own fair hand. No action at this time. Why? I'll tell you why. Because he's been told to take no action. That's why. Listen, Zabowski got here on the 10th, right? Mm -hmm. The 10th. That's just about the time that Liz started shooting lessons. Well, that's it, then. It all fits. Ah, no, wait a minute. You heard his nibs. Lay off Zabowski. Yeah, we can't leave him. Oh, yes, we can. Because we're not going after Sabovsky, are we, James? We are going after Kleist. Come in, please. Shalom, Maurice. This is a colleague of mine, one James Cross. Delighted. Uh, you see, Maurice and I, we have a little game we play. He pretends I'm not in the section. I pretend he's not in Shin Bet. Shin Bet? David, what do you talk about? Israeli secret service, Maurice. <laughs> what a thing to say to a respectable jeweler. <laughs> right, let's talk about your hobby, shall we? Maurice has a hobby. He's interested in war criminals, especially those that haven't been caught yet. Just as a hobby, you understand. An interest. Of course. You have heard something? Gunter Kleist. Waffen SS, medical officer stationed in Poland, disappeared in 1945. Disappeared how? There was a technique for those who had the nerve to use it. You took a prisoner from a death camp with the same approximate size and weight as yourself, helped him to escape, then killed him. You then became the prisoner. But, of course, you had to have yourself tattooed. Like this. Mr. Cross. But, of course, mine is an original. You have a description of Kleist. Height 5 foot 11, weight 11 and a half stone, eyes brown, hair black, no visible scars. He will now be 50 years old. Have you got him? Maybe. The Poles think we have. Ah, uh, the Poles are scarcely reliable about the murder of Jews. Yeah, that's a problem, Maurice. But if for once they are right, we want him, David. We? Glass cage in Tel Aviv? No, no. I don't work for Israel. We are the middle-aged Jews with long memories and a hobby. It could be. If it is, you owe us this man. Yeah, if it is. I'll do what I can, Maurice. Height, five foot eleven, eyes brown, hair black, streaked with grey, weight approximately eleven stone. Yeah, he's older now, look at weight on. Mm. There's no mention of a death camp number in his file, was it? It's hardly the kind of thing he'd show, is it? Quite right, James. Quite right. Speak to Dr. Sabovsky, please. Sorry, but I'm afraid the doctor's gone out. Would you like to leave a message? Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, I'll um, call again later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sabovsky's gone out. He won't be back for an hour. Oh, what now? Right, well, you go around to the hotel. See if you can see Liz if you can. Well, you know, get her out quietly. Sabovsky? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing with Sabovsky, James. Nothing. And what if Liz isn't there? Right, then you go around to. Uh, well, obtain psychiatrist, Dr. Snell. He's bound to be able to fill in some of the background of a man like Sabovsky. I'm going to go and look for Liz, and then I'm going to go and see Dr. Snell, and, uh, what are you going to do? Me? I have a little chat with a snowy friend of mine.
How'd you like your tea? Interfered with. I didn't know. Come again. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, got enough. Oh, yeah. well, I can get another packet if you want. No, no, it's enough. Tough. You busy? Nothing special. You reporting to the cops today, have you? Yes, yeah, morning all day. Oh, the sarky lot. How'd you fancy a little honest work, mate? Much. Five quid's with. Right, you're on. Now, that's real good old-fashioned tea, Mr. Callan. You did say that it was honest work. Would I lie to you, mate, would I? That's my boy. I want you to watch a place. What, in this weather? It's freezing out there. Yeah, well, honest work's never easy, mate, is it? No. I don't suppose so. Yet, there's all these mugs dashing about doing it. I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, well, it takes all sorts, all sorts. It must do. Especially, you've got to watch this porter, right? He's nosy. He's even nosier than you are. Next thing you've got to do is move away from that gas fire, mate. You're bloody steaming. <coughs> right, go on, go on. Now, Liz. Now, Liz. All right, what did Snell say about Sabovsky? Well, he's a Pole. Educated in Lausanne, took his MD, uh, 53. Anything else? Makes a lot of money, spends it on research. What kind of research? Manic depressives. I think Dr. Snell admires him for it. I must say he doesn't sound much like an SS man. Oh, come off it, Willie. That was 25 years ago, mate. Blimey, that's most of your life, isn't it? Anyway, people change. Listen, Kleist, born in Danzig, right? So? So, so he speaks Polish as well as German. Listen, you're quite sure you didn't see Liz. I told you I didn't see Liz. Yeah, she hasn't been trained to spot people. Listen, mate, she wants him dead, right? Does wonders for your eyesight. Come on, let's get over to the hotel. The boss might have been back by now. And James, when we get there, mate, you watch yourself, you know what I mean? Good afternoon, Dr. Sabovsky. Good afternoon. Well, I think uh, I have to wonder. Thank you. Just tell the boy to take the bus. This is a gun, Kleist. Go inside. Slowly. My dear young lady, I wish you would explain your strange behavior. Don't turn around. We didn't all die, Kleist. You missed one. A child. I was three years old. I'm sorry. I do not know what you are talking about. I am talking about Grazisk, Kleist. Are you saying you've forgotten it? My name is Sabowski. I'm Polish. Please put away that gun. Grazisk, Kleist, think. There could be an accident. No. No accident, I promise you. Look at it, Kleist. Hello? Yes? Oh, Sir Walter. 
How very kind of you. Of course I'm free. Uh, 7.30? I may be a bit late, but nothing will stop me. Goodbye. Please. Yes. Uh, he's in. Who shall I say, please? Uh, Dr. Snow and Dr. Rind. Uh, one moment, sir. Uh, on your feet. Uh, Walk. I'm afraid he's gone outside. Must have taken the key with him. Thank you. Did you get it? Five, one, three. Let's go. It's illegal. It's a nice pad, but Liz, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, some bird was in it. work going then? Well, reckon it's all over now, Mr. Callan. Your boat come back just about ten minutes ago. Are you sure? Oh, I seen her, didn't I? No, no, it means are you sure it's the right bird? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. There's something bothering you, old son. I can smell it. Well, you promise you won't get mad at me, Mr. Callan? I promise I'll get mad at you if you don't tell me. Now, come on. Well, it's just she came back with another geezer. Mr. Cullen, she was drunk. Liz drunk. Paralytic. Just after that nosy porter went, he's down the booze and that. Yeah, he can't half shift it. Yeah, he's... all right, all right. Tell me about the bird. Well, just it. She came back with his other geezer. Falling about, she was. A lot of good it done him. He left about five minutes later. Did he? At the geezer? Yeah, yeah, that's him. You too. Mr. Callan, I'm on remand, remember? You'll be on a stretcher, mate, if you don't belt up. Come on. You stay and 
keep your eyes open. Oh, darling, you're not going to break in, are you? I am, mate. You're not. Take yourself in. Cats, stand back. Hold your bloody loaf. Come on, don't go hurry. I am hurrying, mate. I am hurrying. Windows, windows, windows! Oh. What's he gonna be? Look, get him, will you? She's been gassed, hasn't she? Looks like she's been drugged as well, so she needs a doctor. What are you gonna do then? Take her to St. George's Hospital, tell an old story. Go on, get him. Ideas. From, well, it is a groper, but I mean, he, he hasn't got his letters no more. Ah, oh, yeah, the groper. He means he was struck off. The groper was in the same holiday camp as Lonely and me. Yeah, and you didn't half have to watch him, and oh, he used to be very good, but I mean, he only does abortions now. Yeah, all right, he'll do. Come here, come on, James. Boy, oh, gee. A bit of life's flotsam here, haven't we? Right, up. Take her! What? Right, now, you take her back to my place, all right? Use my friend's car. I can't do that! Why not? Took up a law seed me in his motor to say I nicked it yeah, all a right. too. All right, all right, all right. Take it out of the car, will you? Wait for me down there. And, mate, open the windows. Gosh. I reckon that bloody newly have earns his money. That's all we need, mate. Wit. One hour. Right. I send Lonely for the grope. I take her back to my place. You go to the hotel and watch for Sabovsky. I'll join you. And James, when I say watch, mate, I do mean watch. Surveillance, and that's all right. Yes, who is it? Room service. What do you want? A telegram from Switzerland. Or something, you must have killed I just assume Scott, but it's not that I don't like your company, but I mean, there has been violence. Yeah, you're on remand, you're all right, go on. Yeah. There is a little question of my fee, Mr. Cannon. Yeah. Here you are. Thanks. Thanks very much. Do you know, I don't really think I mind lifting heavy weights after all. Now get out of here, you sex maniac. Will you go and get out? You got her in good time, dear. She isn't going to die. In fact, the gas is at least of her worries. Drugged, was she? Uh-huh. Poor cow. Not an addict, though, is she? <laughs> Two gins is a big night out for that one. Someone gave her a tranquilizer and turned the gas on, I suppose. Of course, it isn't any of my business. That's right, Grandpa. That's right. Oh, you always were a rude boy, even in the scrubs. <laughs> I've given her something. She'll have a splitting headache, but that's all. She's been lucky. Oh, yeah, yeah, lucky. Like no idea. Hey, look, yeah, do me a favor, will you? Any time, dear. Will you stay with her for a bit? I've got to go and see somebody. I shouldn't be too long. Do you help yourself to a drink? Don't rush yourself in my account, dear. After all, you're paying. Yeah.
There's not much point in hanging around here. What's all that over there? Where's the Bobski? He's in that white thing there. Must have jumped out of his room window. Still lie, still lie, still. They usually say, where am I? As a matter of fact, you're in David Callan's flat. He asked me to keep an eye on you. Who are you? I'm a doctor. No, no, that's bending the truth a wee bit. I was a doctor. Head aching, dear? Yes, sir. That's all right, then. You were drugged, you see. Don't you remember? No. Uh, this is this man tried to strangle me. Oh, what a naughty man he was. Then he dragged you and turned the gas on. Oh dear, we do suffer for love, don't we? Relax, dear, relax. Love a man's back. Twenty five pounds. Okay. Such a sweet boy. I wouldn't bank on it. He's lover man. Keep her rested and warm, and in a couple of days she'll be as good as new. God knows competition's fierce enough without that. Bye bye. We know about Sabovsky. He, he tried to kill me. Yeah, tried to kill him, didn't you, Liz? Well, she had every right to, didn't she? She hasn't got any rights. None of us have any rights. What's going to happen to him? Nothing. He's dead. It was suicide. He jumped out of his window. James. You, uh, you actually saw him do that, did you? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Let's have it, James. Ah! Give it to me, James. Come on. <laughs> so what did he do, James? Eh? What did he do? He asked you to hold Lizzie's gun while he jumped. You bastard! You have to do that in front of her. Well, that's touching. That is really very touching. What are you trying to do then? You're trying to tell me that you care for her more than you care for your job, are you? Of course it does. Are you? Well, go on, you tell her what you were doing all the morning. He was in the boozer, darling. He was knocking back the scotch all the morning. That's how much he cares. You're twisting the whole thing. Am I? Am I really? Listen, James, all you were cared about was your job. What? You knew perfectly well if Hunter found out about you and Liz, you'd be finished, or you did sweet F.A. James? Oh, go on, then. Go on, James. Tell her I'm a liar. Go on, love her. Tell her. Let me hear you tell her that you care more for her than you do your job. Go on. No answer. Came a stern reply. Listen, darling, don't... Don't you think, Liz, don't you... Don't you think that he, he killed Christ for you? He didn't. He killed him for himself. Killed him because he's got to finish the case. All right, love, come on. All right, all right. That's a neat little toy. Oh, yours, Callum? Oh, no, no, it's far too small for me. Mr. Judd was just showing it to me. Hasn't been fired for some time, I fancy. No, not really, sir. One didn't, Judd. Three balls, sir. Small. Quite effective in the right hands. Yes, I should think so, sir. Well, finish your practice. Then come and have a chat with you, will you? 
Cross for joining us. We have lots to talk about. He knows, Mr. Callan. Of course he knows. You want to pray that he doesn't know officially, Mr. Judd. Your actions throughout were disgraceful. And I told you to leave Sabovsky alone. You still won't say that he was Kleist. How can I prove it now? After his suicide. Now we leave it. No further action. You're lucky. A pair of you. Thank you, sir. No, oh, don't thank me. The Poles are off my back and the Israelis owe us a favor. That's the only reason I don't have your hide. All right, that's all. Not you, Callan, wait a minute. Eilis? Feeling better? Handle this very well. No fuss, no mess, no leaks. I'm grateful. Thank you, sir. And you put the gun back. What it is to have a tidy mind. I haven't spoken to Liz yet. To be honest, I'd like to keep her on, but if she and Cross are I in... think you'll find that's all over now, sir. You sure? Yes, I'm quite sure, sir. I finished it myself last night. May I ask how? I humiliated him in front of her, sir. What a lovable little band we are, to be sure. I hope you didn't hurt him too much. No, sir, no, not too much. She'd have only fallen in love with him if I'd done that, wouldn't she? What, then? I proved to her that he cared more about his job than he did about her. I think she would probably accept anything but that. Very perceptive. Yeah. You think it'll work? Well, it's got to work, hasn't it? We need them both. Yes, we do indeed, I agree. Even so... Cross still has a lot to learn. Keep an eye on him for me, will you? Oh, yes, sir, yes. I'll, um, I'll keep an eye on him for you. Who's going to keep an eye on me? Oh.